Hello friends, this video on continuity and differentiability part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. Please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 6 before watching this video. Here we have to again find the point of discontinuity where fx is equal to x by x small for x less than 0 and is equal to minus 1 for x greater than equal to so what we can do is this x mod is difficult to operate but we can convert this into a simpler form. How can? If you can convert this into a simpler form, I can simply say no the function is continuous or not because x mod is difficult to operate. Also I know that for x less than 0 my x mod is always minus x. Correct. Now this equation is true only for x less than 0. So I can replace mod x with minus x. Agree with me? Because I wanted to get rid of x mod. I am not comfortable with x mod. I am comfortable with plus x minus x but some sometimes the mod x is not that comfortable to operate because a lot of time you can't operate, you can perform operations on that. So I just want to get rid of this mod x. And what I observed is this equation is true only for x less than 0 and I know that for x less than 0 mod x is minus x. So you can replace this guy with minus x. So this guy becomes x by minus x. Why? Because mod x is replaced with minus x and this becomes minus 1. So my new function is nothing but fx is equal to 1 for x minus 1 for x less than 0 and minus 1 for x greater than equal to 0. And that I can write fx is nothing but minus 1 only because for less than 0 it is minus 1 greater than equal to 0 also minus 1. So my function is nothing but fx is equal to minus 1 for all x where x is member of real number. Now since my function is a fixed value I can say it is continuous it is a polynomial function right if you draw this graph this is no x y your graph is something like this your this guy is always minus 1 it is a continuous function just by looking at the function you can see it's a continuous function why because it is a polynomial function and fx is equal to minus 1 for all x so you can say that limit x tends to c fc is always equal to so fx is always equal to fc why you take any value of c Right, it's always minus 1. So that's why the function is continuous. Here also, no point of discontinuity. Please note, here also there is no point of discontinuity. Why? Because you take any value of x, the function is continuous. Let's take one more example. We have to show that the function defined by gx is equal to x minus modulus x is discontinuous at all integer points. Here, this denotes greatest integer less than or equal to x. So this, this function we know that. So if this guy is equal to 1.2, this is nothing but 1. For 5.9, also it is 5. That is greatest integer less than or equal to x. So 1 is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. For 1 also it is 1. That's how it is. That is you round off that guy, you remove the decimal part, whatever you get is the integral value. So you call it integral actually. It's x minus x integral. So to prove that this particular function is discontinuous at integral points, let c be integral point. Integral point means 5, 6, 7, 8, any integer. Just one integer point. Now, in that case, to prove it is discontinuous, I have to prove that limit of fx extends to c where c is an integral point is not equal to f of c. Correct? So first thing is let's, let's try to find if limit exists or not. So let's find the left hand limit for this at x is equal to c where c is any integral point 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3 any integral point. 
not the decimal one, integral point. So left hand limit is nothing but limit of x tends to c minus f of c f of x that is nothing but you take any number it is just less than c c minus 0 0.00001 right so if c is equal to 5 this becomes 4.999 so if you take this guy value this becomes c minus integral of c minus point 0 0.00001 correct now here is the catch the moment for example you take c is equal to 5 this becomes 4.99999 and you take integral of this this becomes 4 so when i took c when I took 5, right, I got 4.999 and I took integral, this becomes 4, correct? So if C is my 5, I am getting output as 4. So in this case, I will get output as C minus 1. Please note, because the moment I am saying C minus 0.001, this becomes 4.99999. And the moment you say 4.999, if I am taking C is equal to 5, so 4.9999, you take integral, this is nothing but 4. So you take C minus 0 0.0001 and from that if you take integral that becomes C minus 1. So this becomes 1 actually. So my left hand limit is 1. Let's take the right hand limit now. Right hand limit is limit x tends to C plus f of x. So now you can take any value that is just greater than 1. So it is C, C plus 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I took a value which is just greater than C. That is f of C plus 0 0.00001. 0, 0, 0, this becomes C minus integral of C plus 0, 0.00001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, now what is the value of this? So let's assume C is equal to 5. So this becomes 5.00001. And if you take integral of this, that is 5 itself. I can show you 5.0001 integral is nothing but 5. So here C plus 0 0.0001 integral will nothing but be C itself. So this becomes 0. So here what we have seen, the left hand limit and the right hand limit is not matching. Since left hand limit and right limit is not matching, I will say limit does not exist. So if limit does not exist, there is no point of equating this equation because this number itself doesn't exist. So I can say that this function is discontinuous at x is equal to c. And what is c? c is nothing but any integral point. So I can say that this function is discontinuous at all integral point because I took x as c was a general integral point and I found that at that point the function is discontinuous. So I can say that the function is discontinuous at x is equal to c where x is any integral point so x, the function is discontinuous at any integral point. The catch here is this part c minus 0.001 you take the integral, this becomes c minus 1, and if you c plus 0 0.001, you take the integral, this becomes c. So I'll write it here because that's the uh, typical part. If c is an integer, so you say c minus 0 0.0001, you take this value, this becomes c minus 1, and you say c plus 0 0.0001, you take the integral, that becomes c. For example, I told you if c is 5, c is equal to 5, let's assume. In this case, C minus 0 0.001 becomes 4.9999 and this guy is nothing but 4. And that is nothing but C minus 1, this is 5 minus 1. If you take C as 5, you take this value, this becomes 5.0001 and this integral is nothing but 5, that is C itself. So that was a tricky part here. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.